Stage, Browns quarterback competition. Uh, Brian Hoyer and Johnny Manziel split reps, both struggling to find their way. In five drives, Hoyer was two for six passing, 16 yards, while Manziel, uh, with four drives, was a seven for 16 passing, 65 yards, and a, a touchdown. Let's listen, guys. I mean, I'm pretty hard on myself. I don't think I did a very good job today. I think there was a lot of room for me to improve. Um, some throws that I wish I would have had back. Um, but I'm not sure. I mean, that's really up to Coach Patton and, and the higher powers than, than it is me. I think I just need to come in every day and continue to try and get better. Come in every day and continue to try and get better. We're handing out grades at schools, ladies and gentlemen. There's a lot of huffing and puffing. Skip Bayless, what, what grade would you give Manziel? <laughs> Stephen A. Smith, obviously, I expect a Jeez. whole lot, an awful lot, from this 21-year-old who could be a junior at Texas A&M. So even though this was only his second NFL preseason action, I'm going to be a tough grader today. I'm going to give Johnny Manziel a D, wow. a D for his effort last night, or lack thereof. Number one, he missed a shocking number of throws he rarely, if ever, misses. Mm -hmm. Number two, he often looked a little overwhelmed by the Redskins' blitzes and their disguised veteran secondary coverages. And number three, and most disappointing for me, I did not see a single flash last night of Johnny football. I'm talking about the magic we just heard Coach Gruden refer to in our open. The magic that we often saw in college and then I also saw in his first preseason game at Detroit a week ago on the weekend. This time with the quarterback job on the line, it looked to me like Johnny Manziel was trying too hard to be the perfectly coachable rookie pocket passer. Mm. To do exactly what the coaches wanted him to do. Stay in the pocket, run through his progressions without running. That's not Johnny Manziel. Mm -hmm. Johnny Manziel is not a robot. I didn't like seeing a guy I think is a rare football player try to play extremely, excruciatingly, conservatively last night. Conventionally last night. So, in the end, I think Johnny Manziel needs to keep the defense honest with an occasional escape. I wanted to see more rollouts. And I definitely want to see just, just an occasional bomb because this kid can wing it deep. We saw that often at Texas A&M. And I saw none of the above last night in all the plays that Johnny played. So, as bad as he was, I still think he was a little better than Brian Hoyer was <laughs> last night. That's not saying a whole lot, but I still think he was a little yeah. better than Brian Hoyer. Yeah. Bottom line, I would still start Johnny Manziel from what I have seen in two preseason games in the open uh, series that's just as pathetic as it gets Brian Hoyer really should be ashamed of himself considering the fact that this is his sixth year in the NFL and he looked like a deer caught in headlights all because of the buzz that was Johnny Menzel clearly the pressure of playing professional football pales in comparison to the pressure that Johnny Menzel's presence brings to the Cleveland Cavaliers and the starting quarterback position because Brian Hoyer is clearly flustered he is significantly better than what he showed last night you should be ashamed of yourself bro you a flat-out embarrassment. We know that you're better than that, regardless of what anybody thinks. Having said all of that, I would totally agree with you. I would give Johnny Manziel a D. It was not an impressive performance. The only thing I'd give him a B or an A for is acknowledging that he was pretty close to pathetic. <laughs> that, so that's I well give, said. I give I'll him credit for that. taking accountability. But Johnny Manziel wasn't that impressive either. He completely mm -hmm. underthrew, overthrew, threw behind guys. Uh, you know, I, I just wasn't impressed with his passing ability at all. And the one thing that I will say say that I am incredibly concerned about that speed that we saw against the Detroit Lions second unit we didn't see that that speed mm -hmm. being as conspicuous against the Washington Redskins whether it's D'Angelo Hall and the crew whether it's a safety like Philip Morris and Bakari Rambo mm -hmm. the list goes on and on they were in Johnny's face Kerrigan got a sack on him and oh, Hoyer right. yeah. uh, J uh, Jim Haslett brought the rain yeah. you know you could tell you could see a conspicuous difference in the defense that Jim Haslett was running under Mike Shanahan and Jim Haslett is running under Jay Gruden. Clearly, Jim Haslett has the reins, and clearly he wasn't lying when he said he was reined in by Shanahan yep. because what I saw from the Washington Redskins was a team, a, def a defense with the ability to put pressure 
on the quarterback. And boy, were they bringing it. They were off on far too many occasions. It was like throwing in a phone booth for both Hoyer and Johnny Manziel. They had no room, no space, no air to breathe. The Redskins were all over so them. So is that and their fault or Washington, should, should we credit Washington? Well, I think it's a combination of both. I think that you don't ignore Washington because we, we've we believed for the last couple of years that they have the personnel to bring yeah. that kind of heat. You now, it. If, it was, if it came out of nowhere and then suddenly they were successful against Cleveland, we'd say, oh, Cleveland stinks. Mm -hmm. But the fact that we've been talking about Iraq, but who was hurt a couple he of years was. ago and it came mm -hmm. back last year, wasn't 100%. Mm -hmm. We were talking about Kerrigan, who was out last year. You look at the acquisition of Hatcher and the crew, you still have D'Angelo Hall and Merriweather and those boys. You just say to yourself, and Ryan Clark, who, by the way, had a good hit on he Johnny did. Manziel yesterday, and his veteran leadership seems to be already showing. Yep. And, you know, I mean, listen, I look at the Washington Redskins right now, and I'm saying if that defense has any kind of potential and they show up, then indeed it does come down to RG3 mm -hmm. oh because that defense okay. seems like it's hell bent on establishing I its agree. presence. And I didn't see Johnny capable of evading their pressure. And that to me stood out because Skip, if he can't run the ball effectively against NFL teams, then he is not going to be what you think he's going to be. What do, what do you think he's going to be? I don't know yet. I, I have I no say, doubt about I, what he's going to be. I have doubts about what he's going to be if he can't run the football. You think he can't teams. run the I'm football? I'm not going to say that okay. yet because i got to see. Trust I me. i got to see. This, this defensive um, front is going to do this to Nick Foles and to Tony Romo and to Eli Manning. They are legit. Okay. That's why I'm leaning But those guys can't run. Okay. Okay, but I'm saying, but they're going to do this to everybody. No, and those guys can all beat the blitz, but okay. they're going to be all over them this year. Okay. The Redskins defense is no joke. No. By the way, I don't think Cleveland's defense is any joke either. That's all I'm going to say okay. that. Yeah. The nice Thank interception by yeah. Hayden as well. Yeah. Okay. Now, I'm going to give both quarterbacks a break for one thing that happened last night that I have never seen in all my years of covering professional football. Mike Pettin, first-year head coach, did you notice the rotation he used with two quarterbacks who are competing for the same job? That's Never cool. seen this before. Yeah. Wait a second. Brian Hoyer plays six plays, two series. Right. Then all of a sudden, with 526 left in the first quarter, I'm shocked because in comes Johnny Football and runs 13 plays. And then before the half ends, 559 in the second quarter, it's left. Hoyer comes back in and finishes the half by running seven more plays. Then Johnny Football, cold, has to sit and watch those plays, then go through halftime. And then Manziel comes back and runs 21 plays to start the second half when I thought maybe he was finished for the night. Never before have I seen two quarterbacks, again, vying for the same job, who had to alternate their series. You know, a couple series sure. here, a couple series here, a couple, no a couple. And, and you get completely out of rhythm. Sure. You get cold on the sidelines. You're not sure. I, I doubt they knew that was exactly how it was going to fall out last night. Mm -hmm. I think Patton was kind of going by seat of pants. I don't know that for a fact, but mm -hmm. it sure looked like it, mm -hmm. just depending on how the series fell. Right. It's not fair to either guy because you, you can't get in any, any flow. You need to get, mm -hmm. if you're going to win the job, you need right. to have a half belongs mm -hmm. to you mm -hmm. and a half belongs to you, or at least a quarter mm -hmm. and a quarter. Sure. That's not how this played out last well, night. Well, let's be clear. First of all, fair is a place where they judge pigs. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter. It doesn't exist. Everybody knows that. That's number one. Number two, it still doesn't explain how guys were being underthrown and overthrown. When you're a quarterback, you've got to go back in that pocket and you've okay. got to fling that football. All right, that's fine. I, I agree. But have you ever seen this in the years you've watched not. football? You're absolutely right that I've never seen it. But at the same time, I'm still looking at the fact that both of you, you it's one thing not to be in rhythm. It's one thing not to be as good as you're capable of being. It's another thing to be so pathetic that you are grossly and flagrantly outplayed by a dude by the name of connoisseur uh, who yes. might not be on the roster in the <laughs> next two out. weeks. We I know he can play, and hey, I know he has Steve Spurrier. Coach Spurrier on. He he said, you guys yes. better not sleep right. on Connor I Shaw. Understand that. I watch Connor Shaw a lot. He's I like pretty him. good. So He's I. not as good as Johnny, and he will listen, never be as good. Listen. And he did get to go against the threes, yeah, not the twos. Listen, listen, listen I watched Connor Shaw because you told me. I remember you were saying, Stephen A., you got to watch this guy. And I watched him several games last night at last year at South Carolina. I'm very, very impressed with him. I was very impressed with him and what I saw. I like his guts. I like his moxie and he can make the throws but you were not i don't care 
about the inconsistency of Mike Pettin. You were not supposed to be so flagrantly outplayed if you're Hoyer mm -hmm. or you're Johnny Manziel. Yeah. And last point, Pettin, if you want to call him out, let me tell you why you call him out. He coached under Rex Ryan for a few years with that defense. Watched as Rex Ryan got all the credit for some of the stuff that he was doing. Now, that's not to say that Rex Ryan didn't deserve some of the credit, but so did he. Then he leaves for Buffalo for a year, if I remember correctly. And why? Because he wants to go out there to establish his own thing and his own name. And sort of Lee, it was the right decision because he ended up getting a head coaching job. But what did we say about Rex those first few years? Doesn't, doesn't have a clue about our thoughts. Yeah. And here's the guy okay. that played under you, okay. that coached under that. you, rather, okay. that doesn't yeah. seem to have that's a clue addition. about offense. Okay. Because based on what we're seeing from the from preseason, Mike Pettin, and I'm not disrespecting him. I know the man knows football. I know he can coach. Yeah. Um, he coached defense. He deserves a lot of credit for that. But based on how this offense has looked and what he's been doing, he seems lost as to what I, to do. I agree with that. All right, gentlemen, you both give Johnny Manziel a D, not a passing grade. Uh, Stephen, you brought up something. It may come down to RG3. We'll talk about RG3 uh, in just a bit later on in the